All right, we are live. Hi, everyone. How are you guys doing? Awesome. My name is Abhishek. I work as a product manager in the serverless team here at Oracle. It's probably why I'm talking about serverless today. I go by at abhi underscore Twitter on Twitter. So feel free to shout out, uh, you know, tag me along. I might get just some more followers, probably. Oracle employee, mandatory safe harbor statement. Don't make any purchasing decisions based on what I say today. And here's the rough agenda. I'll talk about uh, serverless as an introduction. So how many of, of you have worked with serverless technologies before? Just, OK, OK. So what I have found is that serverless is a rather broad term. It's an umbrella terminology for a lot of different technologies. So I'm going to focus on what you call functions, FAS, or functions as a platform, to be, to be specific. So I'm going to talk about an open source project called FN Project and its equivalent managed service on Oracle Cloud called Oracle Functions. And then I'll dive into some use cases, architectures, patterns, uh, hopefully going to have successful demos. Uh, and time for Q&A, there's no specific time. Feel free to uh, jump in if you have a question anytime. And of course, we can talk after the presentation as well. I know you guys, every, everyone likes taking pics of the slides, but just to let you know, everything is going to be available on GitHub here. GitHub.com, ABHI, ROCK, that's a double Z. Oracle Code 2019 should be pretty obvious, right? So after the talk, this GitHub repo will be live. All right, let's dive in. So I was initially, when I was researching and preparing for this talk, I came across this timely tweet by none other than Rod Johnson. You guys know who Rod Johnson is? Yeah, creator of the Spring Framework. So of course, this is a sarcastic tweet, right? And, uh, oops. Oh, I went too far. So what I did was, because this is all in good humor, I asked Morpheus, you know guy who, who Morpheus is, right? You guys know? Matrix. And who does Morpheus talk to or consult? Who told him about Neo? The Oracle. The Oracle, the Oracle right? So obviously, when Morpheus tells you that serverless actually runs on servers, you can trust him. Oh, again. But although serverless runs on servers, you don't have to worry about things. Think of it as an implementation detail, right? You don't have to worry about upgrading them, managing your servers, patching them, things like that, right? And at the same time, you get these, the, the property of cost effectiveness. So you have your servers running, right? You have a bunch of infrastructure, networking, storage, to run your serverless platform, but you only pay when your function or when your platform is invoked, right? And another thing is this elastic scalability. So the platform scales out and scales back in based on your demands, right? Or your workloads, whatever your application might be doing. Now, before I dive into you know, functions as a platform and functions, let's look at how we reached here, right? So this is kind of a spectrum, so to speak, starting with infrastructure as a service, right? Uh, Amazon EC2, any compute instance on the cloud, for that matter, right? And including networking and storage as well. Let's not forget that. And from that, we move towards a higher abstraction, which is a PaaS, PaaS platforms. Platform as a service, so to speak. And then, for the past four to five years, Kubernetes has been rocking our words, right? It is the de facto way of deploying containers to not only cloud, on-prem, doesn't matter, right? So the de facto container orchestration technology is Kubernetes in today's world. And from there onwards, we come to FAS, functions as a service, which runs functions, right? And what are functions? Essentially, at their core, they are the simple pieces of code or logic which are typically fired on events from other systems. It might be a simple HTTP call, it might be a message being dropped to a queue, anything, right? So they are triggered on events, and more often than not, they are ephemeral. They are very short-lived, and they are stateless. Typically, of course, you can state, store state outside, but they tend to be stateless in nature. And of course, they give you all the, all the serverless goodness, like I just spoke about in the last slide. Wow. And these are some of the options. By no means, this is an exhaustive list, right? And you have open source as well as commercial, uh, you know, cloud, cloud vendors. Of course, Amazon is there. You have Azure functions. You have Google Cloud functions. And in the open source space, you have Kubeless, uh, OpenWhisk, OpenFAS. Uh, recently, OpenFAS went through some, well, some changes as far as its core contributor is concerned. But that's a different topic. 
but I'm going to focus on these two areas, which is the open source FN project, as I said initially, and Oracle Functions. Okay. So what is FN, or rather FN project? It's an open source platform. It is Apache V2 licensed, and essentially what it, it builds on top of Docker primitives. So today, if you know Docker, you can leverage your existing Docker knowledge, your existing tool set knowledge of Docker and the entire Docker ecosystem. And if you have Docker running on your laptop or wherever, essentially what you need to run functions or FN is Docker. So I'll, I'll show it to you on my laptop. You can deploy it to any VM in the cloud, Kubernetes, doesn't matter, Swarm, uh, you know, it's, Docker is the core requirement for this open source platform. And Oracle Functions is essentially what we do is we take this core FN project engine, which is open source, and we create a scalable enterprise class multi-tenant cloud service out of it, right? So this is a serverless functions as a service platform for you, right? Again, as I said, it builds on top of the, the core primitives or it takes the core FN project at its, as, its, uh, as its engine. I'm going to show you some demos and stuff. So before that, I think it'll be helpful if we just just go over a few concepts so that all of us are on the same uh, you know same ground and same page. So this is an anatomy of a function, right? This is what a, I mean. Of course, this is hello world, but this is what uh, you know a simple function which you would write uh, on the FN platform. So you see, it has an input, of course. Uh, which it can receive through what is called an FDK, I'm going to talk about it soon, or environment variables. Of course, it sends an output, and in the meantime, you can log to standard out or standard error, right? And at the end of it all, a function is packaged as a Docker image, right? And I'm going to talk about that as well. So I spoke about functions, FDK, right, this, this word. So it's called function development kit. What it does is that it abstracts all the protocol details between FN server, the server component, and your actual function Docker container, right? So you see, if I go back one slide, so you see the string input, right? This could have been raw bytes, this could have been uh, POJO, right? If you're writing Java, plain on Java object. And FDK takes care of all the heavy lifting. So this is, it, it's that middle component there, and we have FDKs in five languages as of now, and you can write your own as well, because everything is open source, so we have Java, Node, Ruby, Go, Python, right? And feel free to, uh, you know, dive into the documentation and, uh, you know, write your own, write your own, roll it out. So how does a function come alive, right? So we all are developers, we start with the source code, our function logic, something like you saw in just a couple of slides back, simple hello world maybe, a YAML file, which contains the metadata for a function. Now what that metadata is, things like what, how much memory you want to allocate it, what is the maximum time, and some obvious things like what is the name of the function, right? And an optional, I should have mentioned that, uh, probably written it over, but you optionally need a Docker file. If you don't give your own Docker file, the platform is actually going to generate something on its own. So, you know, it's as easy as that. And then you deploy it. And what happens when you deploy it? it gets pushed to a Docker registry, something like, say, a Docker Hub, right? And when you want to run your function, when you call it, when you invoke it, what happens is that the server component pulls this Docker image from the Docker registry and instantiates containers, right? Think of it as Java, classes and objects, right? So uh, there is a class in form of, a, you know, say, a Docker image, and the equivalent instances are nothing but Docker containers, right? So this is what happens. And we have a CLI, because you're going to see that in action, just FYI. So you can use it to deploy your uh, functions, create apps, update them, configure them, so on and so forth. Right? So that's, we have a full-fledged first-class CLI. All right, on to the demos. A silent player, prayer to the demo gods. Let's see how this goes. Right, so I'm going to start off a uh, pretty simple uh, uh, hello world, uh, let's see, hello world demo. I'm going to move to my CLI, and is this, yeah, you can see this at the back, or should I bump up the, so, is this okay, at the back? Okay, now, all right, so, um, what I'm going to do is show you 
To begin with, I'm going to work with the local instance of FN project, right? The open source version, okay? So to begin with, I'll start off the FN server, saying FN start, okay? And if you see here, if I do a Docker PS here, I have Docker installed, of course, you see a container by the name of FN server. So this is nothing but a Docker container running on your local laptop, right? And now let me create a, um, a directory, a dedicated directory for me to, oops, if I can type, where am I? Okay, all good. Now what I'm going to do is, you know, uh, generate a boilerplate function through a shortcut command. So I say, I'm using the CLI, I say fn init minus minus, I give it a run time, and this is gonna be go, I'm just using golang, and I say, hey, the name of the function is gonna be hello func, okay? And you see function boilerplate generated. So what it did here is simply generate func.co, this is nothing but your code, and a YAML, a metadata, the descriptor which I spoke about, right? Now, let me check which functions environment or which function server am I talking to right now. So, if I say fn um, ls, ls context, and, and I'll tell you what context is, and if I switch, and if I try to use another context, fn use context uh, default, and I'll tell you what it is, so fn inspect, context default. So you see, context is just a way of telling, hey, uh, there is, there's my FN server, essentially. So right now I'm working on my laptop, so it says localhost 8080. So that's what it is. So now, once I've switched to, to this context, I can say, hey, FN, show me the apps which you have right now. No apps, okay? So what I'm going to do now is deploy an app. So I say FN minus V for verbose, so that I'm able to show you certain things, right? And I say deploy, or maybe not, you know what, this is not gonna work out. Uh, let me create an app first, you know, that's, that's the easier way of doing things. So FN create app, Aura, go demo. Yeah, this is what I practice, so I'm gonna to stick to this. And say FN minus V, okay. Deploy minus minus app, and I give the name of the app. I think all is good. So if you see now, if you just track it, oops, 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 uh, I don't think I'm on the internet. Oh, wonderful, that's not good. Ah, the demo gods. Let me see if I can switch to the right one. Yes, right in time. So I'm gonna clear the screen and try once again. All good now, okay. So you see this, this Docker file which is getting executed right now is actually generated on the fly, right? You don't have, I mean, you can obviously, uh, oh, okay. I'm gonna deploy this to my local instance, minus minus local, I forgot to add that, right? So I'm, I don't wanna push this to an external Docker registry, so I'm gonna just you know, keep this image locally, so I added that minus minus local flag here, right? So you see successfully created, and if I say fn ls apps, of course I'm gonna have that app, and if I want to invoke this function, I say hey, fn invoke, what was the name? Ora code demo, this is the name of the app, and the name of the function was hello func. So, Okay, I get the hello world, and if I say, hey, okay, echo minus n, and this is gonna be a little hard because this is JSON, say, hey, my name is this, and uh, well, foobar, uh, close it, yeah, tough, fn invoke again, over our code demo, and hello funk, let me check the JSON, JSON looks okay, hello foobar, right? So that's what we did on our local machine, right, with the open source FN server. Now, what does it take to take this to the cloud, to, or, to Oracle Functions, to be specific, right? Now, I don't need to create an app, uh, I'm sorry, create the function because I already generated it. I need to do a few things, right? So I'll switch to the Oracle Functions environment. So I'll use something called fn, again, the fn use context. Uh, I have a specific context uh, configured. Yes, please. Yes. Yeah, this is actually a platform specific thing. Right now it is 30 seconds. After that your container is going to die off and then uh, it'll inst if you invoke it again, it'll instantiate a new Docker container. Okay? All right, so I switched the context to something called prod1 and if I show you the details, fn inspect context prod1, you will see that this is nothing but this is just pointing to my Oracle Functions environment. It has a bunch of other details as well. Shouldn't matter for now, but this is what it is. So 
what I'm going to do is create the application. I'm not, I'm, and I'm not going to use a CLI. I will use the UI so that I can show off the Oracle Functions um, UI to you. Okay, sign in. Wow, time is flying. All right, all right, okay. So this is, yeah, this looks good. Uh, create application, I'm going to use the same name. Oracle demo. And um, you, you can ignore this. This is the server part of serverless. Uh, but UI makes it easy, so don't worry about it. So Oracle demo, we have the right name. Not that it matters, but I want to stick to the same name. So it doesn't have any functions right now. Just an application on Oracle functions, okay? Now I'm going to switch back to my CLI. And I'm going to say, hey, now, by the way, in, uh, deploy the same app to Oracle Functions. I'll say fn minus v deploy minus minus app Oracle demo. And if everything goes well, the same process is getting executed. But this time around, the Docker image is not going to be just stored on my local. You will see that it will try to push to an external Docker registry. With Oracle Functions, we actually use OCIR, that is the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Docker Registry, that's a specific uh, Docker registry in, in Oracle Cloud. And this went well, so okay, so our, our image, as you see, was pushed to this particular registry, and if I now want to invoke it, basically the same command. I'm doing the same set of things with just a minor, you know, a couple of minor changes. So I see fn invoke Oracle demo, the same old thing, and hello func. I'm sorry? Before yeah. yeah, I mean, I'll have to say, I'll have to admit, it because it's a talk and it's, it's a demo and I'm at 28 minutes, so that's why, I'm sorry, yeah. That, that's the reason. Essentially, you can plug in uh, the testing part. You can have unit tests as a part of your function. Go, Java, doesn't matter. And you can actually execute them as a part of your build process. So you can do that. I'm, I'm skipping that for now. Okay, yeah, so the same thing, it, it worked while I was talking to the gentleman. Uh, if I do this again, so the first time I think you might have noticed, because I was talking, I didn't notice, you incur that slight cold start, that latency, right, initial latency. Uh, so yeah, that's that. You saw how it is easy it was to start small on your laptop and then, you know, uh, deploy the same thing on Oracle Functions on, on cloud. Yeah, 30 seconds as of now, although it's a platform level detail you should not ideally care about, but as of now it's 30, 30 seconds. And after that the container is going to die by itself. Yeah, if you, if you invoke it again, it'll start off a new container. So essentially what happens is when you start it, the container is, uh, you know, it replies back, it's, it's in a paused state. That is a specific state for your Docker container to be in. So that's what happens. Okay, so before I switch back to PPD, 27 minutes. I'm sorry? Yes, it instantiates a Docker container then and there if an instance is already not there. If it is there, it reuses. It's typically called, <coughs> I'm sorry, <coughs> typically called hot functions, right? So it is alive right there to serve your requests. Yeah, yeah, of course. It is, yes. Correct, those are considerations which you have to factor in if you're building an application. Say you want to connect to a database, right? Things like that. Yes, you're absolutely right. No, it's, if it's in a paused state, then it'll simply reuse that container. Or you might have a pool of containers, right? Uh, depending upon how many, uh, you know, what's your traffic like, you know? Yeah, so that's, that's the idea. It's like, uh, lambda. Correct, yes, 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 it is, right? So as I said, Lambda has, uh, I, don't, I don't know, uh, they don't even talk about it, I think. I'm not sure about their, uh, what's their, uh, you know, uh, time like for so-called hot functions. I'm not sure. For us, it's 30 seconds as of now, but please don't depend on it. It might change, it's a platform level detail. All right, uh, the demo went fairly well, at least uh, in my understanding. I'm sorry? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you don't, you don't. Unless, of course, you're not using a managed service, but for, with Oracle functions, or for that matter, for, with, with any serverless functions as a service platform, it's, it's not new or unique to function, Oracle functions, to be very frank with you. We talk about Azure functions, Google Cloud functions, AWS Lambda, it's all the same, right? Of course, with few differences, but the, 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 uh, the I mean, these are some of the common characteristics, right? Uh, 
uh, of course, it will, right? Because if you invoke your functions asynchronously, you are less, um, you're not exposed to that latency. And if it's synchronous, which I'm going to show you in a few demos, uh, of course, you have to be uh, careful about that and factor that in when you build your application, so on and so forth. Yeah, probably, probably it does. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, no, it's, it's, well, I'm not sure about Lambda, to be honest, but if in this case, if a synchronous call fails, it, it's fail, you have to retry again, right? Again, it depends upon what your application is, right, in the, in the overall context of your, of your entire architecture and application, so on and so forth. All right, moving on. Uh, so this is what I actually did, so I don't need, uh, yeah, all right, moving to the meat of the, uh, of the presentation. So I like to categorize things, so uh, just for my and your uh, ease of understanding, I have, I have bucketed them, uh, you know, these use cases and these patterns into four categories. One is event-driven systems, backend systems, integration, and, and automation, right? So I'm going to just tackle them one by one with some demos. Okay, start with backend system. So uh, whenever you start something uh, with something new, right, probably serverless or functions as a service, it's not easy to deploy or go into production with a, with a complex system, right? So you don't like, totally scratch your complex, uh, you know, say, say a monolithic app and you don't you know, write it in a new te technology to begin with at least, right? So in my opinion, the strategic and a simple way to start off is to write those single single purpose applications target those low hanging you know use cases so to speak right so that you get an understanding of the platform and at the same time you know you spend time with it right and you can move on to bigger and better things so uh, an example which i'll show you is it, it's a very simple one right so it's a function which uses a tensorflow java sdk i'm not an ml expert i use a bunch of libraries just just to be <laughs> just to let you know so it just uses a tensorflow java sdk and uh, if you throw an image at it it's it going to uh, come back and tell you hey this is this is what i think it is and with this much confidence in percentage right i'll show you this demo in a while but this is you know this is just an example of a very single simple pur simple purpose app which you can probably start with when you are you know beginning to work with functions or serverless platforms now, you can club together a bunch of functions to build what I call, you know, uh, serverless APIs or data services for other systems. Now, these systems could be, say, a legacy service where your, your APIs, your serverless APIs can act as a proxy, right? Or uh, in more, you know, uh, bread and butter use cases, you can use these uh, APIs as a backend for mobile and web apps, right? Wow. Okay. And I spoke about web apps. Now, things get more interesting when you are able to combine these serverless APIs, which I just spoke about, along with other serverless services, and can build these serverless web apps, right? So fully serverless, end-to-end, 100%, -end, right? A typical example is, you know, you have, I'm, I'm, prob I'm pretty sure you, you, you have heard of AWS S3, right? Or, uh, you know, you can use these storage services, object storage services, to store or host your front-end assets, your HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and let functions handle the dynamic backend logic, and you have, you have a fully functioning uh, web app, right? I'm gonna show you a demo right now. Hopefully, this works fine. So, let me switch on to my Browser, let's see. Okay, oh, you can see. Okay, perfect. Let me go back a bit. So this is just a simple uh, front end web app. If you see the URL, this is uh, deployed off an object store uh, bucket in an Oracle cloud. And when I scroll down and hit capture right there, um, so it's going to send my image, the one which I capture, to the function at the back end. Okay, and that function is actually written using OpenCV Java libraries, and you'll see what it does, right? So let me try this out. Let me, this is a little uh, finicky, so let me stand back a bit. It cares about what kind of image uh, it gets. So I say a capture and uh, I say a prayer. Ah, okay, so it sombrerified me, right? So, you, awesome, thank you. Uh, so you guys know what this is, right? Um, uh, sombrero is pretty famous in Mexico. Yeah, so this, um, I, can, I can probably try another one. Yeah, maybe not. And um, okay, so what happened is that this was, a, you know, you asked about a synchronous example, so this was uh, one of the use cases, right? So I fired a request, I sent an image, I waited for it, and I got back a reply from, from my function. 
What I'm going to do is, for another demo, I'm going to reuse this. I'm going to save this image, right? So this was open, uh, you know, open CV uh, bindings, an example for a simple web app. Okay, save image is taking longer than I expected. Oh. You know what? Yeah, yeah, no, this is not working. Anyway, I don't know why, but, okay, let me switch back. Um, if I, or is it? No, no, ah, oh, yeah, 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 okay. So I'm gonna save it on top of something which I already have. Of course, I practiced. Uh, replace, and let me go back to my CLI now and see how this goes. So I'm in demo, C dot dot. I can, I can throw this image at it. So I say cat, uh, what was the name? Sombrero dot JPEG, and I say FN invoke, the good old FN invoke, and the name of my app is, if I can type correctly, FN TensorFlow app, and the name of the function is classify. Now, a few seconds will seem like an eternity because I'm giving a live demo. So let's wait for, oh, okay, not too bad. So you, you notice the output here. So it said, uh, this is a sombrero, the hat. Uh, with 42% uh, accuracy, not too bad, right? If I do this now, it, it's probably gonna be a little faster, maybe not, bad idea. Uh, but anyway, the, the reply or the answer is gonna be, going be the same, right? So you saw a simple synchronous app example as well as a web app. Let me switch back. Wow. Okay, now let's talk about event-driven systems. So events are, the, one of the core tenets of any, any functions in the service platform, right? And one of the very simple examples of event-driven processing is something called asynchronous processing. So here, I mean, and, and uh, the examples are, you know, file conversions, I'm gonna show a text to PDF conversion, things like that, right? So I have Oracle functions on one side and object storage, uh, this is OCI, uh, Oracle Cloud Object Storage, and I have a couple of buckets there. Now what I'm gonna do right now is drop a text file into one of the input buckets. Okay, now what that text file is, simple lorem, I'm, I'm gonna drop this text file here, lorem ipsum, blah, 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 some gibberish. Um, so let me go to my storage here. So input bucket, I have convenience URLs here, shortcuts. So, and I'm gonna open my output bucket as well in parallel, just to make this, okay? So nothing here, oh, this, is, this is the name of my bucket, object storage. So I'm gonna upload a text file the one which I just showed you. It was lorem, open, upload. Okay, so the file is uploaded. Now, um, oh, I'm back, oh, wonderful. I didn't realize. Okay, so now what's gonna happen is that this is gonna trigger a bunch of events in the background and there's a centralized service which is gonna make sure and which is configured to invoke functions as in response to these events. In this case, it is a create, an object created event within a bucket, right? And you can, you can configure it for other events, it doesn't, uh, shouldn't matter, right? And uh, I think it's pretty obvious what's gonna happen. So Oracle functions, the code is gonna get triggered. It's gonna do a text to PDF conversion using a, this is a Go function which I've written using Go PDF library. Uh, not that important, but anyway. And it's gonna drop it in to an output bucket. Right, so I bought some time so that my function could execute and do its work. So, um, okay, if I can switch back, which I cannot, hold on. Wow, let me see. Yeah, um, and show, yeah, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, now I'll be able to go back to my browser maximize it, go back to my output uh, bucket here, and hope, oh, okay, it's done, okay, so the trick worked. So I have an, oh, I didn't show you that the bucket was empty, but trust me, it was. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So lorem.pdf, oops, 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 no, 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 okay. Uh, okay, I download this, just to, just to make sure uh, that I've, that it worked. So a PDF file for you and generated by a function. So you paid only for the time, I mean, you are gonna pay only when this function runs. When it's gone, it's gone, you don't pay for it, right? That's the way it is. All right, this worked well as well. Ah, this is going, yeah, this is not too bad so far. Okay, um, moving on. If I can click. 
Come on. Oops. Yeah. Uh, and the other, uh, you know, this is slightly advanced, at least um, it's a topic which, of, uh, which is of key interest to me, stream processing, right? Now stream processing systems in general are built to handle continuous streams of data, continuous data in general. They are supposed to process this with low latency and they should have the capability to persist and be able to replay that data for further processing, right? So that's what stream processing systems do. And you might have heard of Amazon, Amazon Kinesis, Apache Kafka, et cetera, right? So these are popular streaming platforms. Now, as the important thing is, we want to talk in context of integrating your FAS platform with streaming systems, right? So one, I, I look at it in two, two ways. So one is native way of doing it, other is other, the other one is custom, roll, roll your own, right? So with native, you know, example is Kinesis and Lambda integration, you are tied to a vendor, right? That's one way of doing things. But of course, it has its own uh, pros as well, right? But uh, if you roll out your own, for example, you want to integrate with, say, Apache Kafka. You have, you have it on premise, on your cloud, doesn't matter, right? So this is a slightly different way of thinking. Uh, it has a server full component as well. I, I'm going to show that in the next slide. So essentially, what you do is you build those connecting components so that when Kafka gets data in its topics, your functions are called. Right? So that's the serverful component which you'll have to build. So it might now it, it might not qualify as a 100% serverless uh, you know architecture, but this is this is a valuable uh, you know insight and, and pretty decent option in my opinion for the future. And and this is this is how it all comes to life. So you have Kafka in between, and you have sources. Kafka connect connectors pulls data from the sources, pushes it to Kafka, and you have another uh, sync. Uh, connectors which calls your, your functions. In this case, I have an example for Oracle functions. I'm not going to demo this. The code uh, is already there in the GitHub, so you should be able to check this out and run it if you like to. Right, so this is one uh, way of thinking about things. I'm going to go to integration. I'm going to move a little faster because, yeah, uh, I probably didn't uh, uh, see the time. Okay, webhooks, another cool use case. I, lo I love them personally, right? What are webhooks? Very simple. Uh, you, I'm, I'm pretty sure at least uh, some of you know about this, right? They, they are just HTTP callbacks at the end of the day, right? And external systems can call you, uh, call these webhooks. Now, I like them because they are much more flexible. Any events, or, or rather any, any external entity you know, outside your cloud or on-premise environment can, can call your uh, webhooks. That's the beauty, right? So I call them, I tend to call them event-driven on, on steroids. I'm going to show you an example with Slack. Who uses Slack here at Workplace or maybe personally? Not too bad, not too bad, about, about 10, 15%. Okay, okay, so I'm going to show you a demo. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I have a lot of demos. So this is my personal uh, workspace, not, nothing to do with my you know, Oracle uh, stuff. I'll go to the demo chat. Have you guys used Jiffy in Slack? Who uses Jiffy? I use it all the time. You have, oh, okay, awesome, awesome. Okay, so if I, if, if I use Jiffy, uh, what does it do? If I say Jiffy cat, it gives me back a bunch of images. So you see the option to shuffle, all cool stuff. So you can shuffle amongst, I think it gives 20 d images by default, right? So you can send them to your friends. But what I built, or what uh, the serverless webhook which I built is funky. I mean, it's just a constrained version of Jiffy. If you say, hey, funky cat, it'll just give you just one thing, the one cool thing which it gets back from Jiffy at that time. Oh, not too bad. Okay, I, I, I can try it again. Uh, I like it. Funky, or maybe serverless. Uh, I, uh, no, I was not looking for this. this. This is another cooler one. If I can get that in this chance, otherwise I'll forget about it. I'll not, I'm not, ah, uh, 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 no, no. Funky, serverless, I'm looking for a specific one. This one, I love it, I love it. Okay, <laughs> this is what serverless do does to you, right? So, yeah, so going back to the PPT, I'll be able to actually walk you through what's happening here, right? Very simple, uh, I built what you call a slash command in app, that funky is a customized slash command. I wired it up, I, I configured Slack to wire it up as a webhook to call it, and simple, right? Function calls out to the Jiffy API, nothing, I'm, I'm just using an API. It's the random API, it just gives you one image in response to your search keyword, and returns you the response to the, I mean, the, the, the Slack workspace user, very simple, right? Another one is this very cool example by one of our uh, one of our early users uh, in, in because we are in limited availability mode right now Oracle Functions. So this is Carlos Sanchez from CloudBees. So he used FN Project, the open source version, uh, to use them as build VMs, right? So use Jenkins or any other um, you know CI/CD platforms. You have dedicated build infrastructure for that, 
right? So they might be lying around, uh, but you are still going to pay for them. So what he did was to build this function and invoke it as a webhook from GitHub. He configured GitHub, just like I configured Slack. He configured GitHub to call it, instantiate your function as and when you uh, required that uh, you know, GitHub project to be built, and once the build job is done, the function dies, right? The container dies and that's it. You only pay when your build job is running. So that was a pretty cool uh, project. You can, I, I do encourage you to check out the, uh, the complete blog post. You'll have this uh, presentation anyway, so you should be able to do that. Another, now, now, okay, so the examples which I showed you were, you know, they, they were simple functions, right? Of course, I'm giving a demo. But what if, excuse me, you want to build something complex, right? You want to stitch together a bunch of functions, say build a workflow, right? Hey, if this function does this, do call this function, else do that, right? Think of orchestration, think of managing state, right? Think about those problems. Now, there are a bunch of options, AWS step functions, which is a drag and drop of way of doing things. You have Azure uh, durable functions, which is more code centering, and that's what, F and, and, and a similar approach is followed by our open source project called FN Flow. It's experimental, work in progress, but we have got pretty cool uh, you know, feedback on that. So essentially, uh, you can build, uh, we have FDKs for Java, uh, Go has been worked on. So you can write this futuristic, you, have you used completion uh, stage or completable future Java APIs? Concurrency? Cool, awesome. So, so it essentially gives you that model. So you write your function workflow like code, right? And you, and you deploy it to uh, FN flow servers. Go check it out. It's, it's pretty cool, at least in my opinion. And um, another uh, key uh, category is automation. Right? I'm going to uh, walk through this quickly. So infrastructure monitoring is a very popular use case. So say um, you have uh, compute VMs uh, within your organization, right? You have, you have a lot of developers. You want to check, you want to do some uh, instant checks, right? When a VM comes up or gets provisioned, uh, do they have the right roles? Do they have the right metadata, like tags, so and so forth? And if they don't, maybe you want to delete them. I don't know, take some actions, right? So this is... Uh, this falls under the infrastructure uh, when I'm monitoring and a pretty popular use case for, for functions. So what I'm going to do is show you an example where I create an Oracle uh, ATP, Autonomous Transaction Processing Database instance right now and see what happens, right? Uh, I have time. I, yeah, I think I do. Should be able to manage this. Okay, so let me go to my console, the ATP create console. The name is, uh, yeah, Autonomous Transaction Processing. Essentially, uh, ML-driven uh, Oracle database in the cloud. Okay, awesome. So I'm just going to uh, go ahead and create an instance here. You see, I've already created, oh, before that, I forgot. I need to switch on my email client and just hope there is no embarrassing emails. And, uh, yeah. Create autonomous database. I choose the right one, ATP workshop. I'm just going to say, hey, Oracle demo. This has worked well for me, so I'm going to stick to this keyword. I give it a password to which it is happy with. Okay. And I just give it a tag, right? Because I have a rule configured in the back end which kind of looks for this tag and only then does it, you know, does, oh, okay. My passwords don't match. I hope they do now. Okay, so just checking everything. Okay, uh, create anonymous database. No, never. Okay, so this is in provisioning state as of now, if you see, right? So an infrastructure component, right? A database instance has been kicked off in our cloud. Now, if everything goes well, what should happen is that this will trigger another set of events and in the background, what the Oracle functions or the function logic which I've written here does, it, it leverages uh, something called an OCI email delivery service. Again, this is specific to Oracle Cloud, but you can use any service. And it's going to send a bunch of notification events, right? Saying, hey, uh, this instance is now in provisioning status, and when the processing actually completes, it'll tell you that it is available now, right? Your ATP instance is ready to use. I don't see the emails as of now. Okay, so I, let's see. Oh, I have it. Okay, awesome, 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 awesome. So you see, right, or uh, this is the one, the, the instance which I created, and it is in status provisioning. If I wait long enough, maybe three, four minutes, uh, I don't know, by the end of the talk, I should have another email saying it is available now, once, once it is complete. But just to be safe, uh, yeah, I'm going to switch off my email client now because the demo worked fine. Uh, if I can, no, I can't. Okay, forget about it. Uh, you know what? Okay, so that's that. 
uh, pretty uh, simple, yet uh, I, I hope that made sense to you, right, in terms of the monitoring, uh, infrastructure monitoring use case. Last, I'm going to use, uh, yeah, talk about uh, scheduling, right? So these are things, you know, these are jobs, periodic jobs, or say you can, uh, you, you can, you can ask the cloud provider to invoke your function at, that, at a particular time or after recurring intervals, so on and so forth, and, and just, just forget about things, right? This might be, I don't know, your kid's birthday, your anniversary, doesn't matter, or maybe for serious stuff like backing up your database, imports, exports, so on and so forth, right? So that's another you know, bread and butter use case for, uh, for functions as well, right? So essentially, again, the same thing. When your bad job is triggered and your function is called and it gets over, that's the only time you pay for. Nothing else, right? You're not you're not running an in entire infrastructure just to do some cron job processing or bad job processing. That's that's the whole idea. That's the value value add here. All right, almost to the end of my talk. Uh, some tips, right? And this is this is this is not for ninjas. Probably, folks who want to start off, right, should take care of these things. One thing is tr when you write your functions, and this is in general, doesn't matter, Oracle functions, anything, right? Try to make sure that you adhere to the single responsibility principle, right? You, you make your function do one thing and do that thing well, right? So be specific, so to speak. Uh, I had questions about cold start time, so I think I already answered this. You have to make sure that you understand what are these, how sensitive your application is, and be factor in those cold start times, those latencies which you might incur, right? Um, this goes without saying, you have to, don't depend on state, uh, you know, say you have a hot function and, and you think, you know, you have a function in the background, so don't assume that that container instance is going to be, uh, you know, holding state and it'll, you know, satisfy the next or the subsequent call. Externalize your state in a database, RDBS, NoSQL, doesn't matter, and when you use these external databases, make sure you judiciously use connections, right? You might want to save your connection as a global object so that if at all the same function instance is re reused in your next invocation, the, the, the connection logic creation is not repeated, right? But there are some other caveats, right? Functions typically can almost scale infinitely. Almost, right? So that, that is a risk for your database as well. So you need to kind of think about these scenarios as to, you know, if you, when, when you work with external databases, especially, especially RDBMSs, right? So my recommendation is to use serverless services, right? Things like, so you might have heard of uh, Amazon uh, uh, Aurora serverless, right? It's, it's the serverless version of, of Aurora, which is RDBMS service, right? Things like that. I'm just giving you an example, open example, right? So uh, use those serverless services and avoid chaining function calls. So I spoke about function orchestration. Don't don't fall into a situation where you want to build a com complex app, but you say, hey, function one, call function two, call function three, all of them wait for each other. Don't make it a synchronous call, because you will be paying for all the three functions at the same time, and basically losing all the advantages of serverless, right? Either, you know, introduce some asynchronous mechanisms, a queue, object store, doesn't matter, right? Or use some function orchestration uh, frameworks like FNflow or anything else, right? So make sure you at least, uh, yeah, take care of, uh, you know, these few things if you start off with functions or functions uh, as a service uh, offerings. Now, of course, I get to stand here, talk about all these things, but there are, uh, you know, thousands, thousands of people who are, uh, you know, working around the clock to make this successful. Of course, our engineering teams who are primarily based out of the US and UK, our customers, uh, as I told you, we are in limited availability mode. Oracle Functions is not live yet, but we have customers, and they are giving us uh, precious feedback, and same goes with the community, folks like you, who, who come to FN Project, uh, who want to come to FN Project, hopefully, and, and use it, contribute it, you know, uh, and, and give us feedback. And not to forget my, my product management team, which includes my boss, so I should give him due credit if he's watching this, or if he will watch this, hopefully. Uh, and last but not the uh, you know, least, uh, check us out. Uh, we are on Slack, Twitter, we have a blog on Medium. Uh, yeah, we are on GitHub, of course. Uh, everything is uh, open source. This is Oracle Functions announcement blog. You might want to check it out. We, we announced it in KubeCon uh, in, um, you know, in December, uh, you know, when we went into limited availability mode. And as I said in the you know, beginning, this is uh, the GitHub repo, abirox slash Oracle code 2019. This is going to be live soon. That's it. Thank you very much. Right on time. <laughs>